welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube, where the watches are the stars. The voice you hear is Alexander, and the watch you see on your screen is the A Lange und Söhne Zeitwerk Date. What's new? Some of you might say, uh, I've seen that watch before. Yes, of course, the watch per se is not new, but the case is new. The casing is now pink gold, and the combination of pink gold and that beautiful gray dial is done the first time. You know the history of the watch. It was in 2009 when Lange presented the Zeitwerk, and 10 years later they added the date function, and now they present the case in pink gold beautiful combination what's so special on this watch most likely we will never have the opportunity to own one most of us but it is always fun to be able to get hands on such an exceptional watch and this is what we did at watch advisor it's a watch at the end of the day that costs 120,500 euro yes i did not make a mistake yes it is a watch that does not even have hands <laughs> It's a watch that is cheating because there is a digital... No, it's not cheating. Look, this is a very fascinating timepiece. I set it to 10 past 10, as I always do when I start my videos. You know, they normally the hands smile at you in this position. The first thing we do see hacking seconds because I pulled out the crown and nothing is moving. So I will start the watch. And now please watch the indication here. There will be a one appearing to show there is one minute gone. So it is 11 past 10. It's a digital watch, but with a high mechanical, not high tech, high mechanical. There it is. You see? It's 11 pastel with a really interesting mechanical movement featuring a constant force escapement. Yeah, because uh, if I tell you that um, the energy that is needed to move all the discs, you have here disc, you have here, you have here the disc from 1 to 12 and you have two discs here showing the minutes. And of course, you have a date disc in total there are four discs to be moved. And the power that comes from the barrel is 28 Newton millimeter. 28 Newton millimeter. That's quite something. Okay, in the normal world, it's ridiculous. But for a mechanical wristwatch, that's quite something. And all the technology behind why is the watch and how is the watch changing these discs, I will show you. I will give you some detailed information. Attention. There we go, 12. I will give you some detailed information about how the constant force works, etc. So stay tuned, enjoy a beautiful timepiece. Lucky that we get hands on it. And I'm happy for you that I can show you this beautiful timepiece. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. So before I start and I go into more technical details, I will give you the case diameter. The case diameter is a 44.2 millimeter. The thickness of this beautiful Alange und Söhne watch is 12.3 millimeter. The so-called log to log distance, that's the distance in between the log here and log here. I've been measuring a 52 millimeter. Something also interesting for you is always the so-called dial aperture. This is what you in effect see when you look at the dial. So it is really the diameter from here to here or here to here. So the case has, I told you, 44.2 millimeters, but what you see on the die is only, my oh, it's enough, it's big, because the base is very thin, it's 38 millimeter. So the real dial aperture is 38 millimeter. The die you see in a beautiful gray is made out of 925 silver. What else can I quickly tell you? Yes, a beautifully executed crocodile leather strap tapers down from 21 in between here and 18. So 21 to 18, just a small additional information. Next, running you through the indications of this watch. There is the running second positioned at six o'clock. You see it here. We are approaching 45 seconds. Then you already saw these are the hours. So you read it like on a digital smartwatch. It's 10.14. We are approaching uh, quarter past 10 uh, right uh, now. So quarter past 10. This is the power reserve indication. It's a German watch. A lange und Söhne Glashütte. I pronounce it for you correctly. A lange und Söhne Glashütte in Sachsen. And then you do have, of course, a German indication for fully wound auf. 
here is written auf, and on the other side there is a, a red area where you should wind the watch, it's written up, and this means down, so up and down. This gives you the indication if the watch is wound or not. The day function is here, shown, you see it here. The 21st is highlighted. All the other numbers are there, but not highlighted with the red underneath, so you see the 21st. And now the question comes, how do you know if it is a or PM? Yeah, there is only one way to find out. You have the main crown, you wind the watch. I did record the sound of it. Just listen, attention. This is how the watch sounds like if I wind it or if you wind it, just in case you are able to afford the watch and then okay, now you already know how the watch will sound. <laughs> you pull out the crown and what happens is the May, the central, uh, the central, the small second stops. Here, you see it stopped. And what you can do now by turning the crown, you can advance the minutes. I will do this quickly to show you a little bit how it looks like. There we go. And so on, chup, 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 chup. you can quickly run it through and then attention, this is something that is quite interesting. Of course, when you get to 15.9, it will change to 11 o'clock, you see? And if you go back, of course, the mechanism goes back. But if you think, no, oh, it's boring, I have to do this all uh, 12 hours or 10 hours, I don't know how many hours I have to set. No, 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 of course not. There is a push piece located at four o'clock. And if you use this push piece, then you can change the hours by just pressing once on it. And so this is the way how you quickly set the watch. And if you want to find out if it is AM or PM, the thing you have to do is you have to continue pushing. You have to surpass 12, that will be then noon. When you see that the date is jumping here, then you know it's midnight. So push, 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 then comes the big moment. Is it, yeah, you see, it changed to the 22nd. So now I know this is AM. And if I need, for instance, now to set the watch uh, to, well, let's say, uh, let's make 9.59. That's always fat. Nine, and then, okay, I want to set it to 59, and now I have the problem. I'm at six, so what I do, I go back. Look, I go back, chup, 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 and then, okay, we'll set back to 8.59. Very good. Then I press again here. I have set it to 9.59, and what I can now immediately do, I can press in the crown and watch the small second hand start to move again. Yeah, you see. And what will happen next is we will see the change from 9 o'clock 59 minutes to 10 o'clock precisely once it reaches zero. There we go. Precisely, precisely. You can't even recognize the delay when a small second hand reaches 0 or 60, there's always that little change to the next minute. I know, guys, that you are smart and you for sure have already thought about with all these changes the discs are making through one day, how often are they doing it? I know the answer. It's uh, quite impressive. If you want to calculate it by yourself, go ahead. So how often do the discs move during one day? Otherwise, uh, I will tell the answer at the end of the video, of course. So you have to watch it until the end. <laughs> This movement is so beautiful, so beautiful. It is called L like Lima 043.8. It's manually wind and of course, as all lange calibers crafted to the most exacting quality standards, decorated and assembled by hand, twice assembled by hand. I have to say all lange calibers, the watchmakers do assemble, dismantle and reassemble the entire movement as a process they do. The movement consists of 516 parts, 70 jewels, two screwed gold chatons. It's a lever escape and the balance wheel oscillates at uh, two and a half hertz or 18,000 semi oscillations per hour. Power reserve is uh, 72 hours. There is a little also interesting detail I want to give you you. It is a shock resistance balance wheel with eccentric poising weights. I will 
quickly stop the balance wheel and show you. The interesting thing is also that the balance spring here that is integrated in the balance wheel is done in how simply beautiful. Let me pull out the crown quickly and point out what I have been telling you before. I was talking about the eccentric poising weights and you see them here and you see them here and you see them here. And this is the beauty of uh, Lange und Söhne, that everything you look at is simply stunningly beautiful. You do see here the balance cock decorated by hand. Everything is decorated, of course, and this is decorated by hand. Of course, there's a given pattern the watchmaker has to apply. But of course, since it is completely handmade, these patterns do, of course, differ a little bit. So every watch would, end of the day, be very individual, if you want to put it that way. Please do have a look at the so-called ratchet wheel here. This is the ratchet wheel. Look how beautifully it is decorated with a solarization and engraved with the brand name. You see, ah, Lange und Söhne, Glasshütte. Beautiful execution, of course. And what else would you expect from a watch like this? Bravo Lange. Let me come now to the explanation. What is that constant force device doing in that movement? I talked about the power of the two main springs. There are two barrels. It's 28 Newton millimeter delivered. And in between the barrels and the escapement, we have the constant force device. Beautiful indeed. If you look close every minute, you will see something happening here. To better or easily explain what's going on, I want to make a comparison to a camera flash. And if you think about it, a small capacitor charges steadily. And then when you release, there's one clean burst. And that's more or less the same that's happening. Oh, the same. Of course, that's mechanically done. Something different here. Yeah. This is what a constant force spring is doing. So the twin barrels feed the gear train with plenty of energy and with every bead the train then recharges a small constant force spring mounted just before the escapement. Here. Here is the escapement and here is the constant force device. That spring drips an even controlled torque to the escapement for the next minute so the balance sees a steady feed. A steady feed, that's what's important, not the ups and downs of the mainspring, the ups and downs that happen every minute because the discs of the time indications have to be pushed along so there would be a drop of energy. The drop of energy would lead to an unstable swinging of the balance wheel and this would of course then cause the watch to deviate from accurate time. So once per minute and once per minute, the mechanism also releases a time burst to the display train. And that's what I told you. And the minute disc jumps 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. The tens of a minute jumps and so on. And until 59 to 0, 0. Yeah. And because the kick, this kick is buffered by the spring, the rate stays stable while the display jumps crisply. In brief, once again, we have too much energy coming out of the two barrels. The energy is needed, of course, to move the discs. But if there wouldn't be the constant force device that would deliver for one exact minute stable energy to the balance wheel, there would always be a drop in stability once the discs change. There will every minute boom. boom then the balance wheel would have need to recover to gain again stability and then to deliver accurate timing. So the constant force device is preventing this loss of stability by delivering exactly one minute constant energy to the balance wheel. It is charged and then releases its energy again for one minute. And when it releases its energy, to the balance wheel, it also releases the next step of the hour indication of the dial side of this watch. I know a little bit complicated, but I hope I was able to explain it to you in more or less easy words. 
This is now for me the absolute highlight of this video. It is when all the indication at once are going to move. So we will see a change from 11 to 12, 59 to zero, meaning we have a date change and in the same position as the disks of the hours and minutes, the date disk will change from the 20th to the 21st. So lots of energy, lots of things are happening in that movement precisely when the small second hand reaches 60 or zero. And I've been putting the microphones very close now to the watch so you can see and hear. I will shut up in just a few seconds and please enjoy the change to the next day on the A. Lange und Söhne Zeitwerk Date. Do you hear that? And the energy that is released from this little two barrels with 28 Newton millimeters is so dramatic that you really get a haptic feeling on your wrist. That's so spectacular that I could imagine that many of those who wear Alang Yon Söhne Zeitwerk Date do always wait until it is midnight to get this click once again. So guys, it's the end of the video and I told you how often do you think uh, these uh, discs do change uh, during one day? Did you calculate it? Here is the answer. 1,440 times. 1,440 times. Impressive, isn't it? So well, everything is said about this beautiful watch. There's maybe one thing I didn't say, though. case is waterproof, uh, waterproof. Protected up to 30 meters. This is what I forgot. And now, end of the video, 10 past 10, the watch is mining at you again. Yeah, there we are, 10 past 10. As we started the video, imagine the normal hands uh, being, uh, yeah, coming out of the center, they would now smile at you. 10 past 10, everything said, 30 meters. That was the last thing I forgot. Water protection. The price I already mentioned at the beginning, 120,500 euro, including German BT of 19%. The watch is not limited. It is pink gold with that beautiful gray dial. In case you can never afford the watch, as I can't, I will not be able to afford such a watch. But yeah, at least we saw it. And at least you were part with me enjoying and having fun with that beautiful watch. And it was absolutely cool to show it to you with all these details and hopefully you understood also how I explained the constant force device. Thanks for watching a video on Watch Advice on YouTube. Stay tuned with us. Happy holidays. All the best to you and uh, see you back soon here on our channel. Thanks a lot for watching the video on Watch Advisor on YouTube. And if you think that this is your channel, please check out our website, watchadvisor.com and especially our community section on our website to really get in touch with us to share lots of things. You will get more detailed information about the watch industry in deep videos. More fun will happen there. So if you're interested, have a look at watchadvisor.com.